and a fence around it. And it was basically a portable worship center right in the middle of the camp of Israel. That's That was the context of it. And we see it in Exodus chapters 25 through 40, if you want to go ahead and look all that up. But that tabernacle was an amazing, amazing thing, you guys. So here's a, I'll give you the full presentation on this one. So this is what it looked like again. And you can see all the camps of the different tribes of Israel outside of it. And it was in the center of the camp. And you could see that the Aaron priesthood, the the, the priests would be in this area working on the sacrifices, the lambs that were sacrifices, the goats that were sacrifices. And this was the actual tabernacle itself. And inside of this tent through the curtain was the holy place and then the holy of holy place. This is where God met with Moses. So here's a detail of it. So there's the curtain on the outside. There's a priest here. You can barely see him here. But there's layers that covered this tabernacle. There was like a waterproof layer, which was like... Um, uh, they say it could have been like ma a manatees type creature, a sea creature. And there was another one, which was the ram skin, which was dyed with the uh, the tola, the, the little bug, that grub that grows in Israel that makes the red dye, the tola shani, possibly you could say. And then there was a goat covering. And then after that, there was this beautiful, beautiful tapestry, this fabric with the design on it and all these different things. And then this first room right here was called the holy place. That's where the menorah was, the seven gold golden lampstand, which speaks of the church, right? If you read Revelation. And then there was a table of showbread. There was the 12 loaves of bread, which speaks of, I think, the 12 tribes of Israel. And everything inside of it was overlaid with gold. Now, this menorah was solid gold, but everything else was overlaid with gold, and this was stayed lit. It was to kept be kept lit all the time. The high priest's job was to keep this lit, and it was very bright and beautiful in here because of all that gold that reflected off of it. And then this was the veil. Later it would be the veil of the temple that was ripped in two. Remember when Jesus died on the cross? But this was the curtain that separated the holy place from the holy of holy place. This is where the Ark of the Covenant was. You probably saw Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is the Ark, and it contained the Ten Commandments written by the finger of God, the second set, you know, that was but still written by the finger of God. And then the staff of Aaron there was inside of it, which blossomed almond blossoms. And then a bowl of manna, that bread of heaven. And then there was the gold, the solid gold lid. We're going to get into more of this later, but the solid gold lid, which was called the mercy seat. It was sprinkled with lamb's blood once a year. And the high priest would go in there once a year to atone for the people of Israel's sins. And this is where the Lord sat to meet with Moses. He met him right here in this holy of holy place. And this was also, I forgot this, but this is the incense, the altar of incense, and the smoke. And the only thing that would go into this holy place was that smoke, which speaks of our prayers. There's, there's scripture that backs that up, that the smoke would make its way into here, into the holy of holies, so that God would see and smell our prayers and know them. God, God he, he, he doesn't miss any prayers that you have, my friend. All right, so that's a quick thing of the tabernacle. This is what it looked like. The, the later, this became the temple. This is Solomon's temple. You could see these pillars here right in the front, and there was the pomegranates, and there was beautiful design. This was the most uh, beautiful temple, very rich. The paver stones were made of silver, and there was lots and lots of gold inside of it. It was an amazing temple, but he went past what God ordered Moses to do. Inside of his temple, there were seven menorah, seven golden lampstands. It was like, everything was like multiplied by sevens. It was just much bigger. And here he is. This is when Solomon uh, dedicated the temple and the glory of the Lord filled the temple and filled him with the Holy Spirit. It was a beautiful moment. Read about that in the Old Testament sometime when you get a chance. But this is what it looked like during Jesus' time. This would be what is called Herod's temple. Uh, this was the Mount of Olives here. And this is likely what it looked like during that time. It was a very beautiful, beautiful temple. And it was designed off of the tabernacle, that portable tent, right? The worship center, portable worship center during Moses' time. So these gates, they all faced east right here. This is how it was designed. And it's just an amazing thing. So here's another picture of the courtyard, the inner courtyard. Um, during Herod's time, this is what it looked like. Pretty amazing stuff. And this is in Israel. There's a model of it in Israel that you can actually go and look at it. Pretty cool, right? All right, so here's Herod's temple. Here's all the priests in that inner courtyard, and they're doing a sacrifice here, and this this could have been what it looked like, you guys. But back to the tabernacle of Moses. This is the beginning of it. This is the portable tent, the portable worship center uh, where 
the Israelite, where the Israelites worshiped God, okay? So John chapter 2 says this, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. What was he talking about, that very temple? No, he was talking about his body. So right here, Jesus was using typology. He was using a type to describe himself. Because just before this, Jesus turned over the money changers. It was a very violent action. He did not want not want to see God's uh, house being merchandised and, and all the evil that was going on. It wasn't just that they were selling things. They were marking the price way up. They would tell a poor couple that would come in, oh, your lamb's not, no, no, that's not worthy. That's an un, that's a blemish lamb. It's not unblemished. You have to buy one of ours for like way more. And then the, the money was exchanged for a much, much, much higher rate because the Pharisees at that time, they were the religious leaders were corrupt and they were getting rich off the, these poor people that were coming in to worship God. So Jesus turned over the money changer tables and, and violently whipped them out of there, got them out of there. And they're asking them, like, what are you doing? These religious leaders, it really made them angry. And Jesus said to them, he said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Remember, he was raised from the dead in three days. He's speaking of his body being the temple typology. <laughs> so he said, it took, they said to him, excuse me, it took 46 years to build this temple. And yet you will raise it up in three days. Well, Jesus could do that if he wanted. He could have blinked his eyes and raised up a new temple, but he's speaking of his body. But he was here it is. Here's the scripture. But he was speaking about the temple of his body in John chapter 2. So when Jesus died, what happened? The veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Speaking, what does that do? That I think that speaks of us having access to the Holy of Holies, a place where God is all the time through the Holy Spirit, you guys. So here in the, this is the Arch of Titus. You could see this in Rome today if you want to, but it was a, it's a carving inside of that arch showing that they were hauling away the seven golden lampstand and the table of showbread right here. And they were celebrating their victory in, this was like 12 years later when it was built, but their victory in 70 AD, when they destroyed the Jewish people, and it was a horrible day. It was an awful day for the Jewish people and for Israel. Jesus even mourned about it. It made him very sad that this had to happen, that this did happen. But they're hauling the menorah away and the, the table of showbread. You can even see that today. So here's the portable worship center right in the middle of the camps of Israel. And then why does this show Jesus? Well, one of them is this. If you were looking from the east you would see here's the here's the east right here and then this is west this would be north and this would be south but if you were looking from the east you would see a picture of the cross because these camps were divided in sections like this right here and in the middle what do we find we find the portable worship center the tabernacle right in the middle the heart was right where the heart, the heart of jesus would have been and then, so we see it in that way, in the, the way the camps were divided, but we can also see it in more ways inside the tabernacle, what was going on. In John chapter 1, Jesus said this, and the word became, or this is what John wrote about Jesus, excuse me, and the word became flesh and dwelt don't forget that word right there, and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Speaking about Jesus here. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Dwelt among us. What does that word mean? Here it is in the Greek, right? It's skenovo. I, I, I may have mispronounced that. Skeno, actually, excuse me, <laughs> in the Greek. And what does it mean? It means a tent or to encamp. Uh, some say it actually means tabernacle. He tabernacled among us, you guys. He was that tabernacle, the very presence of God, that holy of holies, the, the whole picture of God being in our midst. And what happened once a year? The high priest would come in and he would sprinkle the blood of the lamb on this holy of holy seat, the, the mercy seat of the holy of holies in the Ark of the Covenant. And, the, and Jesus is a picture of our high priest. Read Hebrew sometimes in the New Testament. It talks about him over and over being our great high priest. And he sprinkles the blood upon this lid, this mercy seat. Well, we know this mercy seat was of solid gold. It was to remain empty. Nothing was to be put on it. And it also speaks of a picture of Jesus because his blood, the Lamb of God, was also sprinkled upon this seat. Why am I saying this? Watch 
this. Oh, by the way, you could pre-order my new book, See Jesus in the Old Testament. You can check it out on Amazon if you want. I think you'll be blessed by it. It's coming around August of this year. So the mercy seat covered the ark. It was solid gold. It had the, the Ten Commandments written by the finger of God in them. The staff, which blossomed almonds, right? Almond blossoms and almonds, the Aaron staff. And then the manna, the bread of heaven, speaking all that speaking of Jesus. Here's an inside look of what it could have looked like, my friend. So the word became flesh and dwelt or tabernacled among us, the glory of the Son of God. So there it is again, that tabernacle, there it is. And Jesus answered them to destroy this temple. So he's speaking of that typology again. They said it took 46 years, but he was speaking about his body, right? His body. Now, why is that important? Because also, I want to talk about this. Jesus his body is that temple, but also that mercy seat it was solid gold. There was an angel on both ends of it. When Mary Magdalene went into the tomb that resurrection morning, she saw an angel at the head and at the foot of where Jesus' body lied. And it would have been sprinkled with the blood, his blood, the blood of the lamb. But he wasn't there. It was empty. Remember, the mercy seat was to remain empty. So Jesus is all over this stuff, you guys. And I encourage you, my friend, if you have not click on this playlist right here, how to find Jesus in the Old Testament, you will be blessed by it.